If you have insects, you can spray. If you have cyst nematode problems, you can, you can choose a resistant variety. But if you have uh, drought or heat problems, then, then there's not a lot you can do. And so in, in those cases where you don't have management options, the best thing to turn to is getting better genetics into the soybean and using that to control uh, the problem of, of drought, heat, or flood. Uh, the farmers knew there was a problem. They knew they didn't have good control measures. The farmers called us together. They said, would you work on this? And we started working on that. We have now grown to uh, 20 scientists that are working on this spread in the north and the south, from Nebraska to uh, Georgia, crossing the, uh, the soybean uh, country, so to speak. And so we started with a, with a small group there, uh, really at square one, not knowing very much. And we, we started uh, screening germplasm uh, for resistance. By germplasm, I mean, you know, most of the soybeans uh, in the world come from Asia. We have a, a, a lot of acres here, but our genetic diversity, our genetic base is very small. But if you go to China or Japan or Korea, other parts of Asia, there are tens of thousands of soybean types. And they've been selected there for a long time to, for adaptation to local conditions, including lots of drought. They have lots of drought in, uh, in China. So we had the bright idea, well, let's get some of that material and bring it here to North America and let's screen it and see if any of it looks drought tolerant or flood tolerant or heat tolerant here. It, it turns out there are probably about 10 or 15 types out of all the tens of thousands that really have some, some type of drought tolerance or, or flood tolerance. And we've done the initial genetic studies to see you know, how many genes are in those things. Is it caused by one gene or two genes or whatever it might be? And it's turned out to be fairly complicated. We have, we have already been able to document over 10 genes that affect these traits. We got involved in this because of the work with Tommy Carter's group where they had done pedigree analysis to determine the parents from several hundred North American cultivars. And Fiskeby was in there because of the cold tolerance. There are several different lines that were developed in Fiskeby, Sweden. The breeder there back in the 50s, I think it was, actually went and got germplasm from the northern islands of Japan, brought those back to Sweden where they were making crosses with lines they had there. And the, the main reason they were bringing it over was to deal with cold tolerance. Fiskeby is known to be tolerant to a, a number of stresses that include drought, iron deficiency chlorosis, salt stress, aluminum stress, and ozone. It's very unusual to find a line that has so many different tolerances to all these different abiotic stresses. And so it's a feature of what we're doing now and will likely be a feature of what we're doing to bring tolerance genes of various types into new cultivars that are being developed. You rarely find it in U.S. cultivars. And what that means is, is that it's a source of stress tolerance genes that probably hasn't been integrated into U.S. cultivars to the extent that it could be. It's a potential source that hasn't been utilized up to this point. And we're actually taking the Fiskeby lines that we've found that work very well, and we're actually making crosses with those with uh, modern day cultivars that, that have the other agronomic properties that you need. And so we're at the stage now of trying to make those crosses and then trying to pick those progeny from those crosses that are gonna be good for breeding lines. That This is the next step in the process of trying to get these Fiskeby genes out of the original parent into a breeding line and then ultimately into a cultivar that a farmer is going to grow. Fiskeby is an amazing plant. I mean, we don't know of any other examples of a single genotype that has stress tolerances to all these different stresses. It's very impressive and very unusual. It's a great opportunity for us to look at these things all in one package. What the soybean checkoff funds do is allows us to actually take the basic research that we're doing on Fiskeby and make it into a practical application. 20 years ago, we didn't know very much about drought tolerance or how to, how to protect the plants against drought tolerance. Now we've developed uh, wonderful tools, physiological uh, tools, molecular tools, and we have the breeding to go, with, to go along with that in the field to, to stay a step ahead of the, or several steps ahead of, of Mother Nature. And, uh, and so research is always in that realm is going to be an ongoing game. But with, by adding uh, the USB backing to make us do our job faster and better, we can stay ahead of Mother Nature.